BBC Radio Scotland. Hi, this is Rick Astley, and this is a download from the BBC. For terms and conditions, go to www.bbc.co.uk forward slash Radio Scotland. Hi, pod pickers. In the run-up to the big day, we've got some Christmas gifts for you. Greg Davies, Jonathan Watson and the inimitable Crankies. I'm Lindsay Gillis and this is Scotland's Funny Bits, the only podcast that can do this to Fred Macaulay, Amy Igo and Greg Davies. <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to be when you were wee? Fred had some bold ideas. I always wanted to be some kind of entertainer. Fingers Never crossed. <laughs> Did you know Jonathan Watson was almost a footballer? The football thing, do you think that was uh, was it a lack of confidence or were there just other boys that were much better than I you? I think we'll go for the other boys that were much better <laughs> than me. Because I, I was the same. I was I was pretty useless. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, later on, I thought, you know, I could maybe have done it. And, you know, I'd... We used to do a, a poem in, in Naked Radio. It was uh, the Jock Wallace Book of Nursery Rhymes. Right. And it was uh, Jack and Joe went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown because he wasn't fit. He had no character and the boy didn't believe in himself. <laughs> Just sometimes, Fred betrays the fact he used to work in accounts. If you're looking at wanting to give a child a lot of money, uh-huh. put it into a trust. Would there be anything better than waking up on Christmas morning and getting a deed of trust? <laughs> <laughs> Here's yet more evidence of a background in finance, should you need it. There was a school disco that was a fundraiser, so all the adults from the village school got to dress up in the gear that they wore at the school disco uh-huh. when they were at school. And um, we all got to dance in the school hall, and it was magic, probably a wee bit too much dancing. What did you dance to? Was it old classic It was tunes? old kind of 80s uh-huh. kind of stuff. That was trying to get the entire place up on their feet, and I'd- some were having none of it. I did a wee uncoordinated dance, actually, in a shop uh, a few weeks ago when I got told that the item I was purchasing had a discount on it. (laughs) In the week when North Korea allegedly hacked Sony's emails and pushed back the premiere of the interview, Fred and John Beatty got to the nub of the issue. I'm not going to say anything ill about Kim Jong-un, but uh, he just doesn't look like a technology wizard to me. (laughs) But you should never really go on appearances, no, should you? No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. No. A haircut doesn't mean anything, does it? Nothing really? at all. Nothing at all. I and mean, there's only him and our former First Minister have that haircut. Ah, Fred, so. OK. <laughs> all right. You're not going there, John? No, no. no I, I work in news, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do to relax? Yoga? Meditate? Swift half? Can I tell a wee story? Because I got to interview John Anderson in New York oh, in 1999. Uh-huh. And we spoke to his management. They said, yeah, you can... Well, you won't be able to speak to Mr Anderson between sort of five o'clock and seven o'clock because that's his personal time and he likes to just chill out and maybe meditate. Mm-hmm. And then we got a call that said, yeah, you can come and interview him. So I went and met him in a hotel and he had a pint. Right, he was sitting with a pint, and I said, John, I thought that you were meditating. He said, No, he said, I have a pint at this time of night. <laughs> 2015 is almost upon us, and the Dyson Corporation is going from strength to strength. So, this guy walks in, and there's a guy standing, and he's splashing water in the front of his trousers. And he's going, What are you doing? He said, This is great. He said, I'll get a laugh for this. And he went back out to his company, and he's going, Ah, oh, these new Dyson urinals are horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there's a chance the Crankies return to Panto every year for economic reasons? So we've had 15 for a while. Your most memorable present! Oh, memorable presents. Oh, my goodness. You're under the spotlight here, Ian. I had, a, when we were in Belfast, Ian bought me a beautiful, beautiful necklace and it had da- diamonds and sapphires in it. And unfortunately, when I got to Hull the next year, I had it stolen. Oh, no. So that was my most memorable present. And it's, it's the thing that I, you know... Did you ever see anything similar that you could have replaced it with? Well, no, because no. I think I think that was in the years when we were uh-huh. making an awful lot of money. Is so that right? <laughs> Who cared? I'm just looking looking at the boulder on your finger there. <laughs> You've done all right for yourselves, you two. Oh, well. We've we've no wins to spend it on. We just spend it on ourselves. Your, your left arm's about four inches longer than your right, carrying that thing around. What do you think it takes to write a whole comedy series? Greg Davis knows the secret. 
Well, let, let's discuss and, and let the listeners know uh, just what it's like to sit down with a blank sheet of paper then uh, to come up with uh, a series, a whole series. Because, you know, you're saying you're a stand-up without jokes and the jokes kind of come once you're in kind of stand-up mode. Yeah, and it's a lot easier. Yeah. yeah, but to write a series, I mean, what 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 is the starting off point? It's just me in my underpants staring <laughs> blankly at a... As a computer screen, and just eating incredibly uh-huh. bad food. Uh-huh. Has there been a day where suddenly it's got dark outside and you realise the day is over? Yes. And you're still in your underpants. Yeah. And, and I've the written screen nothing. Is still blank. <laughs> yeah. And it just it's just littered with chocolate wrappers around you. Do you know that, that my bleakest hour? <laughs> right. Go on. I'm not sure I should t- say this in public. As long as it doesn't have any profanity, you can tell us. Oh no, there's no profanity. Oh, it's just cool. worrying. <laughs> I. I I sat in my, <laughs> I sat wasn't in my pants actually, I had some jeans on. Right. I sat all day one day staring at a computer screen uh-huh. and I wrote I literally accomplished nothing. Right. And then I thought, well, make yourself a cup of tea. So I I made a cup of tea and I spilt a tiny amount of water on my jeans. Uh-huh. And my response to that was to pour the whole kettle on my own floor. <laughs> and then out loud I said and I don't know who to, Fred, right. I said, That's the way you want it, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for telling us that. Oh. It's not all glamour, kids. That's the way Stay you, in school. That's the way you want it, is it? <laughs> Amy has gone. Oh, man. Well, Greg, I'm going to tell you right, a, a story uh, along the same lines, just because you, you've triggered it in my mind. Right. A pal of mine, I went down to visit him as he was doing up his old farmhouse. Yeah. And uh, it was hundreds of years old, and he was putting tiles on the bathroom wall, and he had the, 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 the glue paste stuff up in the wall, and he put a tile up, and as he pressed it into the wall, there'd just be a kind of... Yeah. As the tile snapped right. into, because the wall was all bumps and all that, so that tile went away. And you get another, he'd apply a bit more. Up, he'd be, just go to press it and like that, <laughs> snapped again. And that happened three times as I was chatting. <laughs> and then he turned around and he was still having a chat with me. And he picked up a hammer <laughs> <laughs> and he smashed the whole box of tiles. Great, <laughs> great. And I said, "What are you doing?" He said, "Well, he said this time." It was my decision. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, I totally understand. Uh, Lawson Doe, that was the man that, that did that. And I've never admired anybody more in DIY than somebody that was prepared to waste a whole box of tiles just to let them know who was in charge. If he had said, that's the way you want it, <laughs> is it? I love it. I've done so much damage in my flat, Fred. <laughs> it sort of feels cathartic getting this out of my system. <laughs> if you came into, if you saw my bedroom now, one of the drawers on my, <laughs> one of the drawers on my chest of drawers uh-huh. is missing. Why? <laughs> because I was so angry one day writing a script uh-huh. that I, I had to break something, and so I went into my the bedroom drawer. and I and I kicked my sock drawer off. <laughs> Griff Reese Jones didn't seem too bitter about the fact he turned up for Macaulay and Co a day early. Griff, good morning. Good morning. How thank, are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Hello, Hi. Kirsty. Hi. Happy thank Christmas. You. Thank you for coming. Here's five words I've got to start go. off with. Right. Okay, five words. Am I on this programme? <laughs> <laughs> you most certainly <laughs> are, Griff. Uh-huh. Uh, but we're going to have to be brief because uh, some people that were meant to be on on Monday have turned up, so we're just going to speak <laughs> oh, to okay, them. Okay, I understand. Yeah, yeah, of course. Finally. Fred finished the week squinting at the news with Lucy Porter and Charlie Ross. Because, as you know, I've been working with Bridget, so I'm, I'm almost a feminist. You are a fully paid up member of the feminist <laughs> yeah. cause, well, I would say. Maybe I'm not feminist, but I'm a lot less sexist. <laughs> and <laughs> Thank I think goodness. that's progress, isn't it? It's that's taken progress. years, but we've broken you finally. Charlie Ross, what's this all about? Oh, we can't get the head. <laughs> Interboo! Interboo! 
Right, Hollywood is is in disarray this week um, with the, the scandal uh, following the, the film The Interview, which is about uh, a plot to kill North Korea's uh, leader. Um, and uh, there's been a, a computer hacking. This seems to be the new terrorism. It seems to be the new way of attacking people. It's cyber, changing the world. Yeah, it's yeah. cyber terrorism. Yeah. I'm watching the House of Cards at the moment, and that's uh, all got that in it. And yes. and uh, this seems, obviously, Sony are terrified by it because they pulled the film in a completely unprecedented way. Uh-huh. Uh, Americans have bowed to uh, to the pressure, um, and they've come under an awful lot of flack from it. And uh, all of Hollywood is is aghast that uh, their freedom of speech has been curtailed yes. in such a way. I think the only person who's probably happy is George Michael, uh, who who had a bit of a, 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 a quarrel well, with right, the Sony, Sony many years ago. Oh right. gosh, yes, um, of course. But uh, but yeah, this is this has caused quite uh, quite a furore, uh-huh. and uh, I think it's very dangerous precedent to be set because Isn't now it? freedom we're saying, of speech and all that exactly. This very call show the shots. could be taken off. The yes, North we've got to be careful Kim what we Jong-un, say. Uh, well, you're a wee bit late with that. I've heard he's a lovely <laughs> man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, is there anybody else got that degree of cynicism that I have that thinks maybe it was just another talkie by Josh Rogan? <laughs> Thought that uh, occurred to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I mean, you know, I kind of understand that they were saying we should go ahead and we should show it uh-huh. but I wouldn't have wanted to be in that yeah. audience that's the problem isn't it is you think well would anyone really have turned up to see it knowing that there have been terror threats mm. issued I, I I might have chosen to see Dumb and Dumber 2 that day <laughs> I think I might have made that choice but I, I said this during the week Charlie and uh, Lucy and, and Kirsty as well are you not at all surprised that the North Koreans have got better technology than the <laughs> yes. that, that definitely, obviously it's just the people who don't have any technology but they've got the, the, the best technology in the universe <laughs> well, you at know, the top they level. Always, yeah, no one's these... got any food but but yeah, exactly. They've got the best computer. It, they have got you, geeky haircuts, so give them that. <laughs> they do make all these claims for the leaders, don't they? I can't remember if it's Kim Jong Un or his dad that they said he got um, in a golf game. He scored yes. eleven holes in one and a yeah. total score of thirty-eight, <laughs> uh-huh. which uh, I believe is quite good. I don't know much about golf, but and that he could control the weather with his mind. So you and think, was, well, yeah, hacking a few computers shouldn't be beyond. Yeah. Have you, you've, you've, you play golf, don't you, Fred? I you do, must have, yeah. have you had a hole in one? I've had one hole in one <laughs> in, in 50 years of golf. What was the par? Mm, par three. A par, oh, get, uh-huh. excellent. Get wow. you. 185 yards. That's impressive. Was, was anyone weeks. there to see it? Yeah, it was witnessed. Super. <laughs> Kim Jong Un. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Have this one. Well, in fact, look, I'm saying it was a hole in one. Uh, I was just about to tee off, and he said, That's a gimme. Lucy, here's the second headline I want to resign But it will McCoist you You're right Charlie Our pal Ali is in the news And as you know I worked with the man for for three years On on TV um, And with my news that I'm moving on From the morning programme I had thought about booking the hydro Uh, (laughs) If Ford and Greg can fill it 21 days Surely Ali and I can fill it for four (laughs) So watch this space and in the meantime, I'm quite happy to take over managing Rangers. Just, I'm going to put that out there, even on a reduced salary. Why don't I'll we do, do it together? It. I'll tell you, how much, yeah. how much are we going to charge them? Yeah, after oh, peanuts, nothing. <laughs> I'll manage Rangers for, you know, for, for what, equally, equally what I'm earning just now, which isn't that much. Yes, yes, we're, we're very, very reasonable and unexpectedly available. So. Do you know the offside rule? What a story that do would be. Do you know, be. this whole thing... doesn't really thing. matter, they're never offside, Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the big stories of the week. Lucy Porter, here's your next headline. Elizabeth Royal. <laughs> Who's betting on the royal family? <laughs> ah, yes. This uh, is, there's been news that there's been a flurry of betting activity around the Queen's speech. Uh-huh. Always riveting. Always my favourite sporting fixture of the year. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, Coral, I think, was the bookmakers who uh, s- suspended betting on uh, the Queen abdicating in her speech. That there was uh, significant money was being placed on the fact that she was going to uh, abdicate. I think she probably just put the money on to tease Charles yet again, another way of just keeping him <laughs> hanging on. Uh, but uh, yeah, so she's, uh, you know, the, uh-huh. the official spokespeople said, to be honest, She's not going to do it. It's she's never really said anything very interesting in any of her speeches ever. Was Apart from kind Anna of the Anna yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the one. Yeah, that's yeah. the one we all what? remember. That's like, I mean, you the, the the secrets that are held within the Queen's speech. I mean, mm. they're always revealed. They always get snuck out, doesn't it? I mean, you can't have a production team in there and her reading off auto cue without it slipping out. <laughs> so I don't, and I don't think Christmas Day is the day that she'll decide to abdicate. I could be wrong. 
<laughs> uh, and I don't mean to speak ill of the dead, but if Her Majesty the Queen Mother was still alive, we would know for definite because she would be having a right good punt. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be hedge betting at Coral, William Hill, <laughs> Tote. Uh, let's get to the final story. We have whiffed off. <laughs> <laughs> what a good. great headline excellent another work. angel excellent work team uh, yes excellent uh, NASA's Curiosity rover has detected methane on oh. Mars a gas that could hint at past or present life on the planet we've had lots of hints at past or present life on the planet yeah. we must accept there's been life on Mars yes there has I think it's time to just you know and as a, as a bona fide as you know Doctor Who fan we all know the ice warriors live on Mars ah uh, yes so oh, you know no, no, and don't all know. there always, are people out there who know exactly what I'm talking about Doctor Who. Don't There's people know. punching the air right now. I know, I know my audience. I should have had that doubled with the Queen resigning. I could have <laughs> um, so yes, they've, they've found these very low-level uh, um, uh, sort of uh-huh. levels of methane. Uh, yeah. um, and uh, yes, ninety-five percent of the gas uh, on Earth comes from microbial organisms, uh-huh. and uh, that's uh, that's. Uh, sort of like I'm getting into science now, and I'm completely lost. Yeah, but, um, like Scottish but, football. Yeah, I, I mean, do we want to believe there was life on Mars? I, I, I really hope there is. It's I'd quite love sad. to think something. It does something. seem to me that there was life. On, that, yeah, you know, all the suggestion is there was. Yeah, so yeah, Mars happy is with there was life yeah. on Mars in two billion years. <laughs> We've yeah. just missed them. But yes, and and that's right. And they've it left could a note. I mean, our, our time in the, the planet here is uh, very, 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 very small. And I'm quoting Professor Sir Stephen Hawking when I said that. That many berries, yes. <laughs> Would it be funny if you heard someone coughing after the <laughs> sound <That's right. laughs> to try and cover it up? Right. Sorry, <laughs> safety. <laughs> we did that at school. If you if you mm. happen to pass wind, yeah, uh, uh, you had to you had to say safety, or, and if you didn't say safety, people could punch you in the arm. Really? Oh, when I was a teacher, rules? if I ever did something in a classroom, was teaching in a classroom, and there was a kid being particularly oh. annoying, I would go over to him, and oh. if I felt a, a sort of one coming on, and I'd, I'd let it out next to him oh. and go, you get out right now, that is disgusting. <laughs> you are mean. You're a mean uh, man. But, Irene got sent home as I tell the kids once. that it was a joke, <laughs> that it was me. <laughs> Irene came home with a note from his French class to, to exclaiming that he had passed wind loudly <laughs> oh. to the amusement of the other boys. <laughs> oh, I've never been more proud in my life. <laughs>